This is Tim Weir with a video clip from SemiHomemadeTools.com. In a previous video, we talked about drills and we talked about tapping, and we demonstrated several different ways to do that. Today, we're going to talk more specifically about drilling and tapping on the parts from the S2525 CNC router kit from Semi Homemade Tools. I picked the gantry end plate so that we can demonstrate some techniques that you're going to find useful. The gantry end plate is a fairly complex piece in that it has five different size holes that we need to drill and it has two different size holes that need to be tapped and we can demonstrate with it some organizational techniques that I believe are going to help you quite a bit. Notice that I have every one of the holes marked in some fashion. Because of the number of different sizes of holes that we want to drill, I need to make sure that we have every one marked exactly as it's supposed to be before we start. That way we're not drilling the wrong size uh, or using the wrong size drill bit in a hole that would cause us problems later on. In your semi homemade tools kit, you will find drawings for every piece and everyone will have marked very very clearly exactly what size drill you need to use and if it needs to be tapped what size tap you need to use. And The idea is that you'll be able to transcribe this information directly to the part before you start and I, I recommend that uh, rather than doing one part at a time you go through and take all the drawings for all the parts and mark up every one for how you're going to drill it. Don't worry about the taps at this point, just worry about how you're going to drill it. And then right on the piece, I write the word drill. And that way I know that that's the operation that all of my markings are referring to. So on this piece, we have pieces or, or holes that need to be drilled at number five. We have some that need to be drilled at number eight, some at number 19, some at letter E and one at letter Z. Now this is where all those number and letter drills come into play that we talked about in the tutorial on tap. So now that we're ready to actually drill, what I do is take and drill all of the same size holes at one time. In other words, everything that's marked for number five, I drill all the number fives, then all the number eights, and then all the number 19s, and then the A's, or E's, Z's, whatever they happen to be. One thing that is confusing for some people when they first start using number and letter drills is that the smaller the number, the larger the drill. So as we progress from 5 to 8 to 19, we're actually going smaller and smaller and smaller. The letters go, as you might expect, a being the smallest and Z being the largest of that set. So I still work from the smallest number to the largest number and then the smallest letter to the largest letter. So I go 5, 8, 19, E and Z finally. If you've already marked all of your parts you can go through and drill all the fives at one time then all the eights etc. I'm going to show some very short video of drilling the fives, the eights, etc. on this particular piece, but just know that when I actually do it to build a machine, we go through and do all the parts at the same time.
When you get ready to drill your edge holes and tap those, there's an issue that I want you to be really aware of before you start, and that is that because these pieces are water jet cut, they may not be perfectly perpendicular to the primary surface, which means that if you put it on here and try to drill straight down, you could be drilling and probably would be drilling at just a very slight angle. Now I admit it's not much, but we really want it to be as straight as we can, at least on a, on a few critical pieces. And, and we'll outline for you in the instructions which pieces those are. There's some where it won't matter at all, and there's some where it's going to make a, a bit of difference. So the easiest way for me to demonstrate what I mean is to take a look over here where we have this sitting on an edge that was water cut, water jet cut, and we have uh, a right angle next to it. And you're going to see when I shine a light behind it that the very bottom is touching, but yet the top is not. In other words, this piece is at just a bit of an angle. So let's go ahead and see if we can see that. You can tell by the amount of light that gets through that at the very bottom there is nothing at the very bottom, and at the top there is a fair amount. And if we just tip it a tiny bit, we can close that up. And that's just about the amount that you would want to tip that up when you do your edge drilling. Now, how are you going to do that? All you really need to do is clamp it against something that you know is in line with your, uh, with your drill axis. This is just a sample setup. I'm using a piece of extruded aluminum, a right angle, and it really should be thicker than that. This was just a piece that I had available to demonstrate with at the moment, but it probably should be at least an eighth inch, if not uh, uh, a quarter inch. That'll make it much stiffer and make sure that there's no, f no flexing in it whatsoever. But it does demonstrate how we set it up so that we can be sure that our piece is aligned with the axis of the drill. This video is presented by Semi Homemade Tools, where we help you create and build tools to fall in love with. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so now. We welcome you to visit us and find lots of other free information at SemiHomemadeTools.com.